Okay, I will be the first to admit that I am behind schedule. I was planning 26 cases over 26 weeks leading up to the end of 2020, and we're only gonna get about halfway there. Life happens, 2020's made a mess for a lot of people, and uh, that's where we're at. Now, I still plan to finish 26 cases, it's just gonna take longer. But you guys have been super patient, and I wanted to make sure that when I came back, I was bringing back with me something big. Something sort of epic. And I wanted to make sure it wasn't just a case. It had to be a full-blown project, something that, if you guys are so inclined, you'll be able to build at home. That's why I'm proud to bring to you guys today, right here on Print and Play, what I like to call Arcade for Two. Let's get to the design. And here we have the completed design for the Arcade for Two. So my general concept going into this was to design a, an arcade cabinet and then cut it up into pieces that would fit onto a 300 by 300 bed like the one on the CR-10. The main body is comprised of six separate parts, but in addition we also have four pieces to go around the screen, plus some pegs that link them together, two pieces for the control panel, two pieces for the 3D printed marquee, and then one of the parts that I'm most proud of is these sliding brackets that are designed to hold the marquee in place. So as you can see, the screw holes on this side are a little bit bigger, which means that you can slide these in and out and then tighten them into place where you need them. This allows you to either use a 3D printed marquee, or you could do something like a printed marquee with a plexiglass backing or front, and this would be able to accommodate that. Flipping to take a look underneath one of the control panel sections, we can see that we've got mounting points for up to eight Sanwa 30mm style buttons, although I will be using screw-in buttons that have integrated LEDs. It also takes a Sanwa style joystick, and these four mounting points here are meant to take a zero delay style encoder. With the front right removed, we can take a look at how this case is designed to go together. So each piece is designed to bolt into the pieces around it. In this case, there's three mounting points here to connect the right side to the left side, as well as one up here. And then connecting it to the back, there's an additional three. These are M3 sized holes. And on one side, there's a hole for the head of the screw. And on the other side, there is a hole for an M3 nut, which will allow you to bolt them together. In addition to that, I'll be using my 3D printing pen to help secure these together by running it along the seams. Taking a look towards the back here, we can see many mounting points that are designed to be used with zip ties. So it's mirrored on the other side as well, and I'm hoping to use the ones on this side to lock down a power bar. That power bar will then be wired directly into a computer style socket on the back, which will have a fuse and a power switch that will act as the master on off switch for the cabinet. You'll be able to use the ones on the other side to do a bit of cable management for all the extra wires that are going to be inside the machine. Finally, moving around behind the unit, there's plenty of spots for ventilation and our master panel that will hold all of our electronics. I've designed this like this as a single module for a pretty good reason, and we'll go through that during the assembly. Okay, with our design complete, let's go ahead and send this to the 3D printer, see what we get out, and see if we can't build ourselves a functional arcade machine. This cabinet was built for my good friend Adam. His fiance approached me because they had an anniversary coming up and he loves comic books and video games, so she wanted something designed for him that would incorporate both. Since his favorite superhero is Remy LeBeau, also known as Gambit from the X-Men, I decided to bring together a color scheme and some design elements that would be inspired by him. I love the way the purple, black, and red came together and I think I managed to balance the aesthetic without it being too over the top.
And here we have the brains for the arcade for two, which is arguably the most important part of the build, and also arguably the only part that actually qualifies as a Raspberry Pi 4 case. So in this configuration, I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 with a 2x20 watt audio amplifier, and then we also have a 60mm exhaust fan, and then if we flip it over, we can see it's also got a 30mm fan to keep the Pi cool. Now I've designed this module like this so that hopefully it will make this cabinet future-proof. The screen, the controls, the speakers, and all that stuff should hopefully remain timeless, as should your case. But whenever new electronics come out, or if you want to upgrade to something like an Intel NUC or something else, well, all you have to do is design a new panel to hold the electronics you want, and you're off to the races. So, all we have to do is get this hooked up to the rest of our electronics, and we should be ready to play some games. I might have gone a little too big for this one. We're definitely going to have to zoom out. And here we have our finished Gambit-themed Arcade for Two. As you can see, it's got two players with eight buttons each. It's using a 21.5-inch monitor. It's got dual speakers, which are powered by a dual 20-watt amplifier. And the entire thing's running off of a Raspberry Pi 4. And that's the 4 gigabyte model. Overall, I am thrilled with how the details came out on this cabinet. I think the color combinations work really well together. The purple and the black and even through the red and the blue for the buttons. Now, ideally, I probably would have tried to get buttons that were a closer color match to the plastic, but unfortunately, this was all I was able to get my hands on, and they really do look quite nice together. The marquee up top was printed as two separate pieces with color changes. So I started with clear, then did two layers of red for the ending of the text, and then finally finished with black. The audio amplifier is controllable from behind the cabinet with volume control as well as treble and bass. And you can turn off the audio completely just by killing power to the amplifier. Overall, this thing used close to 6 kilograms worth of filament, and it took over a week to print. Each of the parts was a multi-day print, and I had multiple printers running on it for, well, pretty much the entire week. I love the way that the control panels came out, and even the ace symbol in the front. So as you can see, I did a color change on this one as well, where on the left side I started with purple and then switched to black halfway through, and on the right side I switched from black to purple halfway through. The cabinet felt sturdy even before I started stitching things together with the 3D pen, but using the 3D pen really gave it a finalized feel. I don't feel like it's going to fall apart even under heavy use. Ultimately, I didn't have to reprint any parts, but before I release the files to the public, I will increase the tolerances a bit just to make sure that it'll work on a wide variety of printers. To print the Arcade for Two, well, you're going to need about 6 kilograms worth of material depending on the infill you decide to use, and you will need a printer that can support at least 300 by 300 on the X and Y, and 300 on the Z should do it for you. So, what would you guys have done differently? Would you have changed any of the design aspects? What type of theme would you go with for it? Let me know in the comments below. Maybe I'll be able to do some more customized work and give a couple more options for the control panel and for the marquee. Well, that's it for this episode of Pi 26 Ways. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this, what I think is fantastic arcade cabinet. And uh, don't forget to tune in next week, hopefully next week, when I'll be back with another design. <laughs>